Alright, so Orochimaru has always been one of the most like interesting characters I've always found in the Naruto franchise. One thing that's really interesting is you could actually imply that the Akatsuki never captured a Bijou for like 10 years due to Orochimaru like actually leaving the organization. You know, he's plotting to like bring it down, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people inside do have like beef with him and stuff. So, um, an interesting topic I kind of thought of would be like Orochimaru versus the Akatsuki and how he would actually fare against most of the members. And I think it's actually a lot better than what most people would give him credit for and uh yeah i'm joined by a really special guest go ahead and say what's up what's going on guys tg thunder guy here thank you for having me yep thank you for uh coming on here and um so yeah we're pretty much just gonna send orochimaru through a gauntlet style matchup through each of these characters and uh see how he does but um yeah i guess we'll kick that off with some uh orochimaru scaling where he kind of skills that as a baseline i suppose and uh so as i'm sure you guys have all heard before he scales the heroes in, right that's straight up but how in what way is he a, is he on you know, he above Hughesen at like full power is he below do you want to go ahead and like talk about that for a second or yeah i mean i think it's made pretty clear from their fight that both on some level are suffering like mental afflictions orochimaru you see a bit earlier for this like he actually like stabs a kunai in his hand to kind of like overcome tears that are hitting his face so th there is something to look at there like there is some restraint going on his side uh, you can also look at just him uh fighting the way he does with edo tensei also being representative of this he's not directly being the one to take on hiruzen uh for a decent bit of the fight so there is a bit of like infliction going on on both ends w what's your thoughts on this no i actually completely agree um one thing i find really interesting though is like um i believe it's the anime profile guides and ebisu also state that like Orochimaru is a greater threat and is like actually stronger than Hiruzen just like outright and that Hiruzen also kind of like believes this as well he believes that like he's kind of unsure if he would be capable of beating Oro and he does go on to do kind of well against them but you could argue that's like a like a mentally like amped up uh, Hiruzen and maybe not like a normal one um so I actually do believe that Orochimaru is stronger than this Hiruzen and I think that his nerf is just greater I think it's actually more portrayed than Hiruzen's weirdly enough like I think as TG just mentioned him like stabbing his hand and him crying and him like using the uh, the Edo Tensei to fight off start so he wouldn't have to engage him uh and he doesn't use all of his like weirder more like snakish uh tactics like no pun intended later um so I think there's a lot of weird things he doesn't use that are more lethal and like uh almost disgusting that i don't think he wants to use on here and i think kind of allude to him having like a a greater nerf and that like a full power orochimaru um should be either equal to like a full power here's at like his old age or stronger and i think that's pretty consistent because you go with like old man heroes and being stronger than the five kage and you can use the kabuto statement for this i personally don't like the kabuto one because i think that's in reference to the last time we saw like heroes in fight which would be like nine tails attack and that is significantly stronger as like it's at least stated that like that one would have killed orochimaru if it was 10 years ago and that was like 13 years ago as the time of part one so um I don't really like that, but we do have like objective medians like the fan book saying that like Konoha and like the Hokage is the top of all, which is like include the other Kage as well. So I think him being above the Kage is consistent. And there's a little more to that as well if you get into like MS Sasuke. And you want, I've been talking for a while. You want to go ahead and talk about that or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we also have this statement where Sugetsu believes that like Sasuke has Crazy. just like now surpassed his like predecessors or like they all have. Uh, and, but the problem is like Sugetsu hadn't seen Sasuke fight for a while. Um, his, his only real measure of this is Sasuke at the beginning of the Five Kage Summit. Um, and even then, you could argue like Sugetsu's info on Orochimaru was extremely limited as not even Sasuke knew everything about him. So you kind of have like this weird measure to where like Sasuke begins to compare it to like a full power Orochimaru at like the beginning of the Five Kage Summit. Uh, if you did take this statement at face, val uh, face value, it would be in reference to EMS, which I mean, I don't, we don't agree with. But like it, that, that and I don't think that's as likely as an interpretation because also Shigetsu hasn't seen EMS Sasuke fight. So there just really wouldn't be a way to say any of that. So it's just like not that good of a statement to be honest with you. But it does set the idea that like Sasuke um, Urchimaru is comparable to the five Kage like even in Shippuden with these characters getting stronger yeah yeah i completely agree i like what you said there um there is things that some people say to like disregard the statement and it's like Suigetsu being plural saying that like we've just now surpassed our mentors and that kind of implies like taka which would be like the weakest member and um the weakest member is kind of contentious but Suigetsu is actually 
maybe a contender for that a lot of people think it's karin but like the third data book says that they like fight like cats and dogs and karin just beats them up all the time so you know you could say that karin's maybe above um but either way i think it's definitely in reference to sasuke as well considering the fact that like once we get to if he stays weak he's able to keep up with that sasuke in the summit um and they're literally like talking about like sasuke's power and relevancy to Orochimaru. you know like could he um could Orochimaru steal his body and Orochimaru comes back and he like self-admits that he couldn't steal his body and then so we get to still like i wonder about that you know and he goes back yeah. and he's like and that was like just after thinking that like sasuke only ever beat oro just due to like his nerf that he was actually under so i personally subscribe to oro being like um peak five kage summit level and this is consistent if you go back to like uh his scaling above here's him and because like when donzo who's able to like uh keep up with chidori sasuke like perfectly they pierce each other at the same time and stuff um and Donzo, in his last moments, literally, like, states that he was always behind Hiruz and he can never catch up no matter how, like, far he ran. So that's kind of interesting as well, which then would just put Oro above, like, that peak 5 Kage Summit, which I think kind of just helps corroborate the statement and yeah. more or less what it's trying to, trying to portray. Um, do you have any other closing thoughts on that, like, physically or? No, I 100% agree. I think you summed it up really well. Uh, okay, sick. Um... So, we will get into his abilities, because, weirdly enough, Orochimaru's, like, abilities are just busted. Like, Insane. very busted. Like, uh, low-key top of the verse. Like, some of the, some of the top of the verse. And Got a lot it. of people don't think about it, but, like, <laughs> but, like, um... He does have, like, all five nature transformations, yin, yang, he's a shinobi of generations, stuff like that. Um, and do you want to go ahead and talk about, like, what he could really use that becomes a threat for the Akatsuki, or...? Yeah, he has a lot of, like, nuance to his arsenal on top yeah. of, like, all the regenerative capabilities he has, how difficult he is to put down, as we saw with his fight with Four Tails Naruto. He has a lot of niche jutsu, like, the, he, a lot, nobody really brings this up, but he can place curse marks on his opponents, like, mid-fight to paralyze them. He just doesn't, uh, unless he really wants to. Like, for example, you see against Guru Guru, who was just, like, messing up the five Kage. They couldn't really get close to him. Obviously, with the team attack from Taka, he just places a curse mark on him. He's paralyzed and stuff like that. So, he has, like, that niche way. Um, he has he has the Kusanagi Blade, which a lot of people cap out at Four Tails Naruto, which, I mean, that is fair because it just can't pierce him. Um, some people brought up the idea that, like, because Orochimaru, like, spits it out in his fight against Itachi Susano, it may potentially be able to have some higher properties, at least maybe with the Hydra form. I think that's also interesting, although I wouldn't die on that hill. So, he does have some more stuff. Um, he also has his true form, which he can actually go into at any time, which nobody brings up. He can just choose to leave his body. Uh, he does it when he comes back in the war and just, like, switches into a Zetsu body and stuff like that. So, that's also pretty uh, powerful because he has, like, the evaporating blood paralysis. He has all these, like, really niche ways on top of, like probably one of the most expansive arsenals in the verse we just really don't get to see it which is unfortunate but honestly you could make a case that and again the, the heroes and statements where he talks about all my jutsu is really n like no comparison to orochimaru's genius like that's the comparison being made here so yeah. you could really just infer a lot of what's seen orochimaru would just be able to replicate yeah i completely agree like one thing about his like um blood poison that i think is like really um interesting is i'm kind of of the opinion he got that idea from like hanzo and his poison which we'll get into like poisons and how they relate to akasu members and one in specific later but um we'll get into how hanzo's poison kind of comes up with that but just keep in yeah. mind it's kind of like that it's like a uh more like a cloud or whatnot but yeah we're gonna go ahead and start off with everybody's favorite akasu member he don and um you know, I, I hate I, I hate to say this, but like it happens every single time you watch it. Yeah. You know, a Hidan related video. It's yeah, he loses. That's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. could say that like he's relative to like Asuma or you know Kakashi of that. And Kakashi and both of those characters are like peak Jonin, right? They are very strong. He's able to keep up with them, and I actually think he dons somewhat like uh, underrated. Like during the Yugito encounter, I don't think the statement of him being like the slowest and weakest in the akatsuki like you could say it's true or not but i think it's more questionable than what people think a lot of people think that's like concrete and they never question it but that whole scene he's trying to like lure the yugi to out so maybe you could like give him some sort of case and say he's not just complete cannon fodder here but yeah. i mean let's be honest like awesome is able to react and perceive his attacks um shikamaru is as well so i just think that like 
it's kind of just bad for Hidan, you know? Yeah. Uh, one point that you brought up to me is, like, Kakashi believes that, like, um, the Sanin are still above him. Being, like, Jiraiya went during the pain fight. He's, like, fighting. He's, like, how did Jiraiya take on this many? He's, like, completely baffled by that idea. So yeah. you could just say that, like, these peak Jonin are very strong. However, they're still not quite Sanin level. And Oro should be the uh, the strongest of the Sanin and just kind of uh, holds that. Um do you have anything else to add to Hidan? Maybe about like um his abilities or whatnot. I mean, honestly, like e even if he did get blood from like Orochimaru, Orochimaru's like anatomy like seems to just be so much like different than everybody else's. Like this dude just gets torn in half, and like his body's never really his own body. It's it's kind of interesting to discuss. Like, what if Hidan actually like stabbed himself? Like, how much of an effect would it actually have on Oro? Who could just disregard his like old body and stuff like that which i think is neat but again that's like such a far in the future scenario like realistically like he's just gonna get like decapitated with the kusanagi blade if asuma's uh if asuma's like uh chakra blades are able to do the same like there really shouldn't just be too much problems for him if he really struggles which he won't he has snake summits he has all this crazy stuff like oro's never really out of options in any of these fights yeah one thing really interesting and it's not like a direct piercing it's more blunt force but like um four tails naruto kind of like swipes through oro and just cuts them in half and it just like it's like snakes and they just reconnect so maybe you could say like the scythe wouldn't even completely get through him you know and like yeah when oro stabs himself it's more like intentional you know rather yeah. than like maybe he just couldn't quite react to that uh four tails naruto so he just like let it happen i guess yeah. kind of like passively maybe um but yeah, I, I think you summed up that pretty well. And let's be honest, no one should have many contentions with that. Um, the next Akatsuki member, though, is one of the most contentious members in the entire group. God. Being Kakazu, the pain-slaying lord demon god. Absolute <laughs> monster. God among men above the sonin. You already know. Anyway, he. I actually do think... I'll be honest. I actually think Kakazu is underrated. And I, I think you kind of... Agreed. Yeah, I, think, I was going to say, I think you kind of stand on a similar hill with that. Um, I think... Um, I'll just talk about like the diamond morph. I think the diamond morph is something that gives Kakuzu a really big uh, advantage, especially in a fight like this with someone as lethal as Oro. I think uh, the diamond morph, something that's like nigh impenetrable, is pretty good. I think I think it is really Agreed. good, uh, and uh, there's not much that Oro could do to get around it. But like that's fine as like it's just or just doesn't have to get around it because kakuzu can't move really whilst under it yeah. so he has to you know find a time to attack oro otherwise nothing happens so as, as underrated as that is and it's like a really cool feat uh because you don't see many durability amping things in the series uh it just kind of gets you know negated i guess by oro here um yeah. do you want to talk about the, the two tails fight and maybe how that went down and stuff and yeah it's pretty yeah a lot of people have like asked me my opinion on this um and I, I i'm of the opinion that they simply just waited out the two tails because we actually do know from naruto and this this generally does fall in line with like how tail beasts and their jinchuriki function that uh, there is a time limit with their bijou forms especially if you make chakra deals with them at a certain point the chakra is gonna run out so that's probably what happened um it's in a similar thing with like killer b killer b doesn't just stay in the eight tails form the entire war at a certain point he does go back and um, reverse same thing with naruto so oh, i'm of the opinion they just waited out um yugito's uh two tails yeah. form pretty much and the reason i say this is because otherwise no hidan would not be able to get his win con off and actually mm -hmm. pierce her uh, through the two tails hide so that just seems to be the most likely conclusion otherwise i mean i guess like their ap just scales to her bijou bomb yeah, and, uh, like and that. like to to touch on that if you actually notice in that fight um the day just completely changes it goes from like normal to like damn near dark out you know what yeah. i mean so it, it's yeah. pretty like sun setting everything like that yeah. um so the, the fight wasn't just like what we saw and uh yeah but go ahead keep going no, no, I 100% agree. Uh, and again, like you mentioned, like the diamond morph, uh, that's definitely like, it, it's like a stalling mechanism in my opinion. Um, the best way to argue for Kakuzu would be like a hypothetical situation where he fuses with all four hearts and hits Orochimaru with like a Storm 4 ultimate all four nature release jutsu, which <laughs> he doesn't do in character. He only really yeah, fuses okay. when his hearts go down and stuff like that. So again, it really doesn't take too much time. And if he actually does decide to like separate from his hearts, then Orochimaru could also just use his own summons and just like systematically take out the hearts. Um, if Kakuzu fuses, again, maybe it presents some problems, but at the same time, it's like, 
nothing you really just exhibit should just permanently put down Oro, in my opinion. Like, nothing really just, like, strikes me as that. To where, like, Oro has, like, all these niche options that he can use for, like, each uh, situation uh, 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 Kakuzu puts him in. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I will say, like, um, if he does go to, like, all the hearts, and he has them more as a numbers game... Orochimaru can just use the Edo Tensei, and I typically do not believe that he uses the Edo Tensei in battle. I think it's more yeah. just against Hiruzen, because, like, again, he doesn't want to have to fight his master and stuff. Yeah. But, like, if he notices this clear numbers advantage, Oro's a genius, so I think he should just be like, alright, I can use these. And whether you think individually they are, like, peak Kage level, I think together, you have to at least say they're able to press Hiruzen enough. This would be a Hiruzen who's, again, above the five Kage, like, individually, so. Is it, they're, like, peak Kage level um, opponents, and, you know, like, you could say, like, Rai Kage is, like, you know, dead fast. Some people, like, in five Kage Summit think he's, like, KCM1, and is just not on that level. And, I mean, I'm not going to get too much into the feat, but I've talked about it in previous videos. If you go to, like, him, you know, reacting to Yugito's Paul, he's not reacting to, the, like, the actual, like, combat speed. He's reacting to the drawback of her Paul because it goes from, like, uh, her right yeah, Paul yeah, goes yeah. from knee level to, like, full extension behind her head. So, he's that's when his arms are completely up. And then, so, yeah. like, when she moves it down, there's no movement on Cox's part, and he just gets slammed to the ground. Yeah. Um so, I mean, maybe you can give him, like, a really good interpretation and say that, like, um, he tanked the Bijou Bomb because there's this big, like, uh, like spherical hole out of, like, the mountain, I guess, that yeah. it may lead to, like, a Bijou Bomb, but it could just be, like, um, another, like, fireball, which is, I know, a possibility you brought up. So, I think that's just as likely, and uh, I think in speed, him being, you know, KCM1 level is kind of bad. I mean, like, yeah. Choji and Eno react to, like, his attacks and stuff like that, um... He does have his, like, a uh, Jiangu form, and there's, like, a statement that says, like, Oh, dude, ah! I just had a fucking cramp! <laughs> Alright, and, um, yeah, I, I think that, that pretty much sums that up. Um, next up, we got a more interesting member, one I think definitely poses a, like, a way larger threat. Um, not really because of physical ability, but what he could really bring to the table with his arsenal, that being Datara. Do you want to go ahead and start off with Datara? Yeah, I mean, I I'll start with this. Um, if you go off the idea that, like, Hebi Sasuke scales, like, two or above Datara, I, I actually think he scales above Datara. Um, Datara only really scales, in my opinion, with, like, his explosives in the air and stuff like that. If you actually look at that fight... Uh, Datara really isn't able to combat Sasuke on the ground. It does get tagged consistently and notes he's fast. So again, my opinion, there's also factors with Sasuke in that fight uh, and how he was pressed. But I will say if you go off that and that heavy Sasuke is still inferior to a full power Orochimaru, that would already put Orochimaru in a good light. Uh, some people argue heavy Sasuke over no arms Orochimaru. I think that's like whatever, say if you want, but it is pretty objective that heavy Sasuke would not be above the likes of full power Orochimaru at this point in the series. So Kind of putting it like that, Orochimaru comes in pretty strong. Uh, so th there's a lot of good comparisons to make. What, what's your thoughts here? No, I, I completely agree. Like, I don't... I'm going to be honest. I don't think Datara actually skills to heavy Sasuke, like, at all. Like, in combat yeah. speed. He literally... It's literally the first instance. He has two reaction feats in combat. Yeah. And they're in the very beginning of the fight. And yeah. the first one is from a giant distance. And Sasuke moves. Datara only reacts at the last second after he moves through, like, Toby. And then he jumps back onto a tree... And then he notes he's fast. And then they're much closer. You know, like, I can't say a distance. It's like 10 feet is what it looks like, you know, like off, like, eyes. And he moves, and then Sasuke, like, jumps up to him. And then Datara just can't even react. He literally just has to, like, fire a bomb out through, like, his hand. And he's like, I barely managed to split, like, to escape hidden in the, hidden the, in, like, the, the bomb blast, you know. And then he, he goes to contest it one more time on the dragon from an even farther distance and then just completely concludes that, like, uh, I just need to get out of his five meter attack range. This is bad. Yeah. And he yeah. just drops bombs, which is a nasty thing because that's part of Dater's arsenal. It's just, like, flying high and dropping bombs. Yeah. But as you mentioned, which I think you covered very well, Oro could definitely scale above this heavy Sasuke. That's what we were mentioning earlier with, like, the only reason why Sasuke was able to ever beat him was due to, like, uh, his illness. And if you go back to that scene as well, like, Oro's able to react to, like, Sasuke, who, like, stabs the, the lightning uh, thingy, like, right through the door, and he just completely pulls his hands up and reacts. And this was, like, off guard to, like, medicine bed, like, death-ridden yeah. you know, Oro and stuff like that. So I think you covered that up. Uh, 
pretty uh, pretty well. What do you think like Oro could do to Daedra to really like bring so him he, down? He, he has a lot of options. You could argue a lot of long range ninjutsu. Um, I, I will say, if you argue, he kind of gets in close, kind of similar to Sasuke. There's not too much Daedra could do, and it's not like. I'm of the opinion, I don't think his explosives would be really that much able to deter Rochimaru that much, just due to all, like, the nature of his arsenal. Uh, the, uh, the nature of his arsenal and how he's able to regenerate, body replacement, all that niche stuff. Um, he also does have rights on, which you could actually infer maybe will lead to him, like, being able to disarm Data as bombs. I think that might could be a little less likely um since you know he doesn't have the sharingan he wouldn't be able to like see the bombs on the ground uh, i will also say too or just i'll say data as uh, clay explosives because i think in this situation he doesn't even get the same like strat he did where toby put the bombs in the ground and stuff like that i think it's just strictly air explosive so maybe it could be a little less likely um but he should be able to recognize like the earth style signs and stuff like that so there is a bit like again right he just like has options for everything Datara can do. Like if Datara shoots an explosive at him, he could shoot like a long range right on attack to just mm -hmm. disarm it. You know what I'm saying? Like he has options and stuff like that. So again, just very rushed down or he just like has kind of some counters uh, to whatever Datara could do. I can't even see a situation where like the fight lasts long enough to where Datara like pulls off some of his bigger maneuvers like uh, C4 or uh, you know c0 even but again right even if he does fly out right and we're being generous it's not like orochimaru can't summon manda or other snakes to like bring him higher in the air as well so there just really is like no way to argue data would just be able to like kind of do what he did against sasuke to orochimaru yeah i completely agree Oro's arsenal is just far better and even though like they have beef and data wants to fight him it'd just be bad you know what i mean yeah so i think Oro does have a clear advantage here i will say that like um I don't think Oro could take like a C3, you know, like obviously C3 in the third data book state to be like yeah. the strongest, uh, it's like the pinnacle of all like explosive jutsu and stuff like that, which is insane. And it's implied that like, um, he's able to like bomb like a docile Bijou with like something lower than C3 as it's implied like when C3 comes out, it's the first time he's ever used it. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting, something interesting just to note, but like, yeah. I just think Orochimaru's like snaky tactics just would easily get around that and as you mentioned manda literally what sasuke did um and oro is maybe not as like much of a genius as sasuke but i think he's certainly smart enough to to be able to do that and i think it'd be very like disingenuous and dishonest to say that he wouldn't be able to do that um and uh yeah, yeah. he's just like physiologically like so different as well so maybe you know c0 wouldn't you know do as well or something like that maybe you could say like um if data just does just like decide to stay in the air that he could just have like the hashirama edo tensei just like wood style try to grab him like from the sky or something which is interesting yeah. so you yeah, know yeah. um yeah i i think i think that you know orochimaru should just beat up data if i'm being completely yeah. honest do you have any other closing thoughts on that one Nah, nah, 100% agree. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, the other rivalry that Oro actually does have within the Akatsuki, this one I think is a little more interesting, um, just based on Arsenal alone. And this is like sorcery. And this is one, you guys have all heard it, you know. Third Kaze Kage, strongest Kaze Kage ever. He has one that's like, he's, you know, the strongest Shinobi. Um, that's kind of interesting. What's your interpretation to that statement in the third data book? I, I, I think that is strictly in reference to San Shinobi because that is a way more prime Hiruzen that's alive and just kicking the bucket when um the third would be around and stuff like that. And even if you want to like get into the time frame um, with like how far it dates back, you could even say like Minato potentially just like straggling around because i believe it's uh 20 years ago if i'm not mistaken like that's when he actually like till kills yep. the uh yep. yeah yeah so it, it, at, at that point you know it would just be in reference to like the strongest in the sand that's also just mm -hmm. consistent with the statements made about the third kazekage being the strongest kazekage so that that's my two cents i don't really think it speaks to like other yeah. villages and, stuff and like that. to go off that i will say um the statement says that like he like went missing over 10 years ago um so we know that you could almost say that third kaze kage was in rain when minato was like hokage in like post uh learning that like whole reputation because yeah. i doubt because if you don't go with that then you have to say that the second kaze kage was up alive until like minato was like slayed in the third war which is really weird to say the second kaze kage was alive um and that also just doesn't fit with how irrelevant he really is like that's the one we know the the least about like i don't even know his name like i know like the first one that's reto and he's known like for his power and like kind of uh creating the village um and kind of bringing it up from nothing but who's the second you know what i mean he's kind of irrelevant so i just don't think that's yeah. 
quite implied and i think the third kaze kage being like that is more or less just from san shinobi and due to like characters like minato characters like heroes and uh stuff like that being around and stuff and um even then people like in the rain they think that like pain's a god and stuff so um I definitely don't think they would be like, you know, Pain's a god, but th he's not the third Kase Kage. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's kind of weird. So, uh, I, th I think the third Kase Kage, he's strong, but it's kind of weird. And, like, to be honest, one thing I've questioned, and, like, this isn't, like, we'll get into the third lore in a minute, but how does Sasha even scale to the third Kase Kage? Like, we have not a clue, like, if they actually fought. Like, if you go through all the statements, it was, like, a difficult uh, opponent defeated. But you yeah. could just actually interpret that. Um, and the, he, he also says, like, this is, like, the hardest one he's got, you know, and stuff like that. There's some, one says it was an easy fight uh, or is, like, an easy, um, like, challenge, I guess, or something. He could have uh, he could have jumped in with the 100 puppets, like, with his yeah. puppet body and yeah. stuff like that. Because Sasori you knows, like, he hasn't used that since he joined the Akatsuki. Mm -hmm. So it's, like... We really don't know how that the like Sasori could have jumped and again it was like a hard battle. So if you want to say like you could argue like on some level because you know for example right Sasori with his like hundred puppets uh, is faster generally speaking because he doesn't have to do the finger movements like the chakra cords are like directly yep. connected to him. So there isn't really that like response time. There's no reading the finger patterns and stuff like that. So it just like. Even then, it's like a bit questionable. It's like a little difficult, especially yeah. since again his hundred puppets all coated in poison. Uh, it's really interesting to see like how that battle could have gone about and stuff like that. So it's still, mm -hmm. it's like a good statement, but it's still vague. Like you know what I mean? Yep. No, I completely agree. And one thing that, for some reason, people attribute Sasori's poison to the third Kaze Kage. But no, that's like Sasha's poison being added onto the iron sand like itself, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, he could have very well used that poison that he was developing. Like, he could have just came up to the third bed or something and poisoned him, you know what I mean? So it's, we have, we have not a clue. Like, there's no way to prove that they went out in some, like, sand field and Sasha just, you know, you know, decked him in the face and they were actually, like, physically fighting skills and speed and whatnot. And a lot of, that that's like where um, his speed ceiling comes from, his third Kazekage, and where he skills in speed. And he's, you know, the strongest Kazekage who scales to Rasa. And I've discussed this before, and this is, again, a speed argument. And Rasa, when he keeps up with War Gara, it's a clash of sand, in which we also know that Rasa's gold sand innately has higher mass than uh, Gara's, which is just normal sand. Um... And so it has like a higher mass and they equal each other out. So therefore for the force to be equal, just using the basic force equation, since he has a supreme advantage in mass, Gar would henceforth have to have a supreme advantage in acceleration and speed in order to actually equal out this force um, just due to him not having that mass advantage. So uh, yeah, it's like what where you go with like where Gar could scale, which some people think he's like bloodlusted V to A. Um, it just doesn't work. It just generally doesn't work. Like, uh, just for the speed skill, at least. So the third cause Kage doesn't really scale, uh, where people think, do you want to go ahead and touch on him and the third cause Kage? Yeah. I mean, I I'll say this too, about the third cause Kage before we get into Sasuke. So there's kind of these hoops. Um, the third's also pretty known in like the statements about him reference his iron sand being what made him the strongest it doesn't actually reference like a stat like you know how certain shinobi have like certain stats and stuff yeah. like that like rakage is known for speed and stuff like that so you could even infer as well that like his iron sand was so cracked that's just what made him he might not even like necessarily scale otherwise to like a bunch of these other shinobi and whatnot so again right a little questionable um but saucer you know obviously and I i'll say this too um I I actually do you want me to i don't know if you necessarily should add anything or do you want to just get into saucer himself now um, yeah, we can just get into Saucer. Yeah, um, I'll say this with Saucer himself, first and foremost. Hiroko Puppet's getting slammed. Uh, you know, if he starts with that, it's getting no diff. I don't really think there's that much contention with it. Do, do you have anything you want to add on there? Uh, well, I mean, it's crazy in close course. No, I'm kidding. No, uh, no. Yeah, I, I don't think it does anything. Like, yeah, it doesn't scale anywhere. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and then obviously you have the third Kazakage puppet. Now, this could provide some uh, – th th there are some issues here because uh, you kind of have to talk about the poison and how that would affect the Orochimaru. I will say I'm of the interpretation Orochimaru does have some innate poison resistance since he can handle getting slashed by the Ninetales over and over and over, which like one swipe – 
Like is, is is soccer's whole like chakra systems like going wonkers and she's like on un- she's like unable to grab tree branches and Yamato makes the note that it's like directly like comparable to poison. Um and this also does bounce off Sasuke, who does have uh poison and resistance as well, just having a Rochumaro's curse mark. Sakura studying Sasori's poison and coming up with one and Kakashi's like Kakashi's like that probably wouldn't have worked on Sasuke and stuff like that. So there's a bit of precedent to suggest like the poison may not actually be that effective against Rochumaro. What's your opinion? Um yeah. Yeah, like one thing I uh, I think about that is I mentioned this in the very early like portion with the poison, but if Oro's poison is anything like Hanzo's or is relative to Hanzo's, uh, a lot of people say there a lot of people try to just debunk Hanzo in general with Chio, and this this is kind of important. But Hanzo's poison could be above Saucery's. Now many people are so quick to note that well Chio had a antidote for Hanzo's but not Saucery's so that's a clear indicator. Well she also fought Hanzo for years on end and like didn't have to be in a mid battle. Like it's more implied that when she talks about him, this is another reason why she doesn't scale to him like physically, is she was just on the battlefield healing people who were injured with his poison. Um which is consistent as well because uh she's kind of just portrayed in that arc to be below Sonian level and here's, I mean, not here's in Hanzo praised the Sanin just because they survived. And so wouldn't he do that to Chio? You know what I mean? So, um, but uh, one thing that's interesting is Hanzo's poison is actually has a, like a faster kill rate of two days rather than three days uh, compared to Sorcery's poison. Uh, and it's, it's a, you know, like just as paralytic. So you could say it's actually uh, more lethal and whatnot. So if you think Oros is like on that tier, then maybe you could say that he has quite the resistance or maybe that's why he has it is to have a resistance to something like that, which might've scared him uh, in the past or something. Do you have anything yeah. to add to that one? No, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. And I definitely like what you said. I'm, I'll bounce off the Chio thing. Like if you kind of like go further down this interpretation, cause I do think Chio is a uh, pretty impressive uh, both of her data books like note her medical ninjutsu uh, first and foremost like before all her other attributes uh, i'm not saying chio isn't cracked but what i'm saying is like her medical ninjutsu is always, always at like the first and foremost like when discussing her abilities which would kind of support the interpretation that you just laid out for us i, I just thought that was like an interesting note as well for sasori yeah. but yeah honestly like it so if you kind of detract the poison it's just like iron sand versus orochimaru which i mean i think is interesting but at the same time like how it's like it's kind of weird to look at how Rochimaru would also react to like these like the iron sand itself and like how that would necessarily fit like put him down like what do you think about that like it's kind of weird to assume because um, we haven't really seen that like if he gets like pinned does he just like drop his body get a new one you know what i mean like what happens there that's very interesting i think the iron sand is so hard to justify like what it does but I think if anyone has a really good case against it, I think it's actually Oro. Like, I think that's a good possibility you just brought up. It's like, say he got crushed against a wall or something. He'd just slither out of it with, like, his mini stakes and kind of go out of it that way. Yeah. Um, but the fight were to progress a little longer, I think that one really good thing he could use to just fight instead, which is kind of puppet-based as well, is bring out the... Um, the two Edo Hokage and force them to fight as they could just regen and they can't quite get crushed and they could go on to fight the third Kaze Kage which would allow um, Oro to have like an opening to where he could just uh, go to actual you know sorcery himself as well and they are rivals so you know maybe you could say that he knows where the where the core is and uh, whatnot um well, what do you think he could do to like the iron sand and the poison maybe I mean, the Iron Sand, you know, we touched on the poison. The Iron Sand's definitely an issue. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily see it putting down Oro, uh, just like, you know, because he can't accelerate and stuff like that, and he does have, like, the omnidirectional attack and whatnot. But it can be avoided, and we know Oro's, like, a very slippery fighter. Um, Something I want to note, too, is that Oro could potentially just cut the chakra threads um, from Sasori's, like, fingers oh, to the third Kazakage puppet, like Omoi does in the war, which is pretty disastrous for Sasori. Um, especially since like Rochamar would have knowledge of this and whatnot. So that's also a potential issue. Um, I will say though, like again, Oro can like always choose to like make more summons, like uh add Edo Tensei to the battlefield and whatnot to kind of mitigate any numbers advantage. Like hundred puppets, I can't necessarily see making the biggest difference against like um uh, I can't see that what's the um Fucking Monda. Okay, I can't see necessarily b- making the biggest difference if like Monda just like drum like runs through the battlefield and whatnot. So it's definitely tougher to say too, especially since a lot of Sasori's arsenal, aside from the Iron Sand, is just like basic weapons, 
basic poison bombs, like basic swords coated in, um, you know, poison and whatnot. So it's like if you mitigate that, it becomes that much easier. So it kind of is a little predetermined on the poison point, I will say, like if you kind of believe that or not. <laughs> Yeah, I was just thinking, um, like, could you imagine, you know that scene in the Obito versus Minato fight where Minato just drops Gamma Bunta on Karama? Yeah, He's yeah. gonna do it with Mama, on, like, Mondo with, like, um, onto all the puppets, he's gonna drop yeah, him down, yeah. he's like, alright, die. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I think, um, to be honest, I think Saucery, I think he's underrated, but I, I think he gets kinda just, kinda just beat up by someone of the caliber of Oro. Um, one thing you can also just use, like, blatantly, if you still, like, are gonna be really edgy, is the fan book claims that Oro is the most powerful and dangerous of all village enemies. A lot of people like to interpret this as all Konoha enemies, and be like, well, this is stupid because he's above Madara, and I don't ever interpret that this way, and I think TG agrees with me. I think this is more in reference of all village enemies, as in all village enemies of the other, like, areas. So, he is the yep. most dangerous of all the, um... Uh, the village enemies opposing also the other villages at that time not the ones that came before just pertaining to the leaf um which would include characters like saucery and which saucery would have his body and everything completed and he might even be more like uh willing and more uh powerful at that time as well just due to him not being like as uh willing to die for like the eternal art and uh and whatnot so yeah i think or uh or just kind of beats up saucery but um Next up, we do have Kisame. Do you want to lead with Kisame, or uh, or you want me to? Uh, you 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 can you can start with this. I I know you have okay, a okay. bit of an opinion on it. <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. So I've talked about this before, and I've talked about this in a Killer Beavers the Akatsuki with me and TGA, which you should also go check out. Um, but I don't really think that Same Hada scales or like I don't think be I'm I don't think like Kisame scales to where people think and i think it's more samehada scaling to where people think if you go to all of his best feats against b you'll notice there's like when b charges at him like with the v2 or i mean not world but kisame just doesn't move he blatantly just does not move at all hand stays in the same position but samehada ducks under completely moves sideways goes up blitzes b absorbs the chakra does all the reaction for him for that um for the octopus flavored chakra and whatnot so um i think you know like samehada will do a lot of the lifting here and he does a lot of lifting for all of Kisame's really good feats. And I don't even think he scales to B with that. Because I think B is also... Because B is also not trying. Like, just blatantly. Um, and he's not trying in, in the way that he can't use his, like, giant jutsu and whatnot. Because uh, he doesn't want A, the Raikage, to know where he's at. So he kind of just holds those back. And I think he was testing and more or less playing around with Kisame. Until he realized that, like, oh, oh, you know, this is kind of messed up. Once he was in the bubble and stuff. And then by then he was out of chakra. So him scaling to B it just isn't that consistent. Uh, and if so, this is like a B that you know he's not on that like KCM one level because B's always training. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's like his whole shtick. That's what he's doing like the first page he's introduced. So saying he scales like KCM one is kind of weird, and it's more or less he scales like uh, right under or to an opponent who's just unquantifiably below the Raikage. So I, I really don't think that does anything. Um, and I do think that Kisame should be actually scared of, like, Orochimaru. Um, and I think that that's another reason why Kisame had a lot to do a lot. Do you want to go ahead and talk about why Kisame might be scared of Oro? Or? Yeah, Kisame should be a bit intimidated by Oro if you go off the Jiraiya statement. Um, just due to, like, the reputation point. And that regardless of your thoughts, he does think, like, Asanin's reputation is enough to, like, warrant him to be, like, intimidated. So... If you have a Rochimaru who's like also notoriously like more dangerous, more feared, more well known as like this guy who's just not even human as most people like imagine him or interact with him, it's just pretty it's pretty easy to see why Kisame would be pretty intimidated by this tier. I mean, even Kakashi, who's like taken on like Pain and Itachi, like saw vividly like got fear hacks, saw his head getting cut off by just like interacting with Orochimaru. He doesn't have that with anybody else in the series. So it's like, it does paint a pretty consistent picture that Orochimaru isn't even human. Uh, you, you look at that, like who he's above, like on a similar tier. It's just like, yeah, Kisame would just be, would probably be pretty intimidated by Oro at this point. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. One thing interesting is, I'm pretty sure when he does fear hack Kakashi, that's the only time Kakashi ever uses Raikiri prior to lifting up his Sharingan. So like, he was so preemptively like scared, he couldn't even think. And this is like the top Jonin, you know what I mean? This is like Kakashi, which is just crazy to think about in general. But um, yeah. one thing that 
is interesting is so now we have Kisame, who might be more wary of Oro, and, he, and then that means Same Hada doesn't have to do the lifting. And Same Hada probably won't want to deal with Oro yeah. because yeah. If you notice, like, with the Fireball Jutsu and Edo, and, like, I think it's, like, chapter 550-ish, um, you could see that Same Hada doesn't absorb certain things that he doesn't like. Like, he doesn't like hot things, for example. Yeah. Um, so, which, again, you could see in that chapter as well with uh, Itachi's Fireball. So... Considering how Oro and uh, Kabuto's chakra as well is just constantly compared to be nasty and just disgusting and evil, uh, why would somebody have to want that? It's not octopus nice flavored chakra. It's disgusting yeah. evil snake chakra. Like, you know, it's like, and this is just like a property. Like chakra has properties. It's not like all one thing. So, um, you know. I think that's kind of interesting. Which means that, like, Sami Hada won't be able to do all this. I will say, if he does... Uh, Samehada would help, like, a lot, being able to absorb a lot of the Jiu-Jitsu, because Orochimaru is, like, the best parts of his arsenal is how, like, vast it is, uh, a lot of ninjutsu and whatnot, so that could all be, uh, yeah. absorbed by something like, uh, you know, Samehada or, uh, or whatnot, so, um, uh, do you have anything to touch on that? I mean, I, I, cause I agree with everything you said. I think Orochimaru is just like honestly the wrong type of fighter for Kisame to fight, just due to like the nature of him and stuff like that. And like we mentioned, he's like he has ways to like go around this. Like he doesn't have to fight with like long range ninjutsu. And like the whole chakra point's kind of a mute point potentially as well. Yeah, he can place a curse mark on Kisame to like paralyze him. Um, or just fight with the Kusanagi blade, which would also more than likely damage Samehada himself. So he could also just like cut the blade up itself as well. Um, if you go off like Enma, now that could potentially scale. So it's like, again, right? Ruchimaru just seems like to have all these advantages over Kisame, whereas like Kisame's like this momentum based fighter. You know what I'm saying? Which yeah. he doesn't really get any of that against the Ruchimaru. Yeah, I completely agree. Like Kisame's whole stick is like the stronger his opponent, the stronger he is. And again, Oro is stronger than him, but it just doesn't work because, again, he is stronger than him. If you really want to like contest that and be weird, uh, you just say that Oro is above Hiruzen, who scales above Raikage, and who's just definitively above B. As like the hundred leaf section of the Ford Data Book just says that like the Raikage is the strongest in the village, so you know, it just put him above B. So he should be stronger, but again, it's a case like this where it just goes pretty bad, and I don't think Kisami really could do anything to oro um and one thing that's interesting is like the kusanagi blade versus samiata and to be honest i probably give it to the kusanagi blade uh just yeah. do like samiata being more alive and he doesn't like doing certain things and uh kusanagi is able to like uh clash with like enma and stuff who's like the strongest of all the summons and you know manda doesn't directly die from like c0 so the summons are th like him being the strongest summon it's not like oh, okay well they're all buns like the summons are nuts you know what yeah. i mean so um just generally even like the sani ones which was which uh enma would be like above that and the uh, the grass long sword just superior so i think i should definitely be able to cut something like that and just pose um a threat to kisame who's already on his uh on his toes and on his boots um so yeah, I think Oro should probably beat up Kisame as well. Do you have any other thoughts on that? No, I agree. I agree 100%. All right, all right. So next up after that, we have, you know, someone pretty fodder. Uh, we have Conan. Oh. And <laughs> do you want to go ahead and leave with Conan versus Jiraiya and how that fight kind of went, why it might be misconstrued? Yeah, that fight definitely gets a, a bad rep on Conan's part uh, just due to a couple things. For one... Uh, pain kind of implies that she's almost like nerfed uh, to some capacity because he kind of questions her ability. He's like, are you going to be able to kill your like former teacher, Jiraiya and whatnot? So it kind of implies like she's going through like this mental ordeal to like kill Jiraiya and stuff like that. But a lot of people don't know this when they talk about Conan is that like her fighting style is to just like phase through attacks. Like she gets hit by a fire style bomb and it's nothing. So you could also just say she anticipated like being able to like disperse through Jiraiya's attack which just happened to be the one counter to her. So there's a kind of there's a couple factors that maybe indicate that Conan vs. Jiraiya isn't as what it, most people seem, where she's like this sub-sage mode level or sub sani fighter. Not saying she isn't, but I'm just saying like that may not be the reason for it and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, like, even then, like, just before the fight, you know, again, like, Payne's like, can you really go through with this? You know what I mean? So he's kind of questioning what Conan would do. Um... I will say, 
she might pose a threat to Oro just with her like um her shikigami dance um and her being able to like almost face the attacks. It's I'm not gonna say it's like it's like Kamui, but it's kind of similar in like yeah. how it nulls like physical attacks. Um, yeah. Again, not quite as good, but it is still impressive and she's pretty unique as well. Um, which might pose a threat like you know like a like a traditional stab say from Oro with the um with the Kusanagi blade just wouldn't work. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like, uh, you say Toby Rama, you go with his, like, Edo, like, water style, won't work. Uh, the wood style, you know, maybe if you think it's gonna suppress the chakra or the paper, but I don't really think that's how that's gonna work. Um, but she kind of just counters a lot of what he does. But, um, I will say, before we get directly into their encounter, we do have Conan versus Obito. And, to be honest... Like, Obito stomps Conan. Like, Conan is, like, the definition of, like, she should have won that fight. You know what I mean? But yeah. Obito admits that, like, he, like, underestimated her, and he wasn't really going all out. And she was also trying to, like, more or less clash ideologies with him, and he didn't really care. It's, like, one of my favorite scenes in the whole series is actually, weirdly enough, here. And Conan's like, do you even know why me and Nagato betrayed you? And he's like, not really. That's your problem. <laughs> like, it's, it's actually really funny. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't care, bro, as he should. Yeah, exactly. Go. Um, but, yeah, I mean, she has 600 billion paper bombs in an ocean and failed. So, you know, I, I, I could say that um, her paper bombs, if they were to hit Oro, would cause a problem with the explosives. Uh, if it were to actually go through him and you were to say that, like, he didn't just, uh, like, quote-unquote, like, nullify through it with his, like, mini stakes or whatnot, but if it were to hit him, uh, I'm not gonna say that Aura would just tank it like an absolute chad. It's probably yeah. not gonna happen. Um, do you have anything to, to add to that? And I, what I probably, might do? I'd probably say, like, you could maybe argue, like, he if, if you want to do some, like, out of character, like, if he does take enough damage, he's just, like, leave and drop that paralyzing, like, blood poison that like if she inhales it you know would you know take like take her down and stuff like that but i think more off more likely than not his best way to win is just like out fatigue her to the point where she can't maintain the dance that she can got me anymore i think that's probably one of the better uh, arguments because oro can go the distance with a lot of fighters so you know he just kind of goes that far just keeps blowing her up with jutsu because again like or oro's chakra is pretty crazy like even small portions of it we're like amping the shit out of Kabuto's control over the Edo Tensei. He's like, bro, he's like sucking off Oro. He's like, this chakra, bro, I can't believe it. Like the smallest amount. So it's like, on it, like uh, that's probably what I would say. Like probably the better ar argument is just like he out fatigues her. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I completely agree there. Um, and Oro just, and then at that point, Oro just has a better arsenal. You know, like straight up. So um, yeah, yeah, I think like you know, let's not dibble dabble on Conan. Uh, because the next one is an absolute stomp in Orochimaru's favor. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the next one's pain. Uh, it's pretty bad. So, yeah. we can go with Orochimaru. And I guess I'll just start with some narrative. And so you have the, you know, you have the Sonin teachers of the, our, our main cast, right? Our main two characters, Sasuke and Naruto. And you have their Sonin teachers being Jiraiya and Orochimaru, respectively. And then we need a threat for these guys to kind of come up against. So then you get pain for Naruto and Jiraiya. And then for Urushimaru and Sasuke, you have Itachi. You know, you have a Sharingan user and a Renegon user. And they are the now big bad guys. And then a point you brought up to me, which I thought was really interesting. It's kind of like Shonen Dragon Ball E. Uh, is in the war arc. Then they have to come together and fight an opponent with a Sharingan and Renegon I. Which yeah. is kind of interesting. Uh, I really I really like that, uh, that idea. Yeah. But it's just kind of portrayed through that, that, like, basic narrative that these two, like, Itachi and Pain are very much relative, and they are above the the peak Sonning, uh forms. They're just above that, those Sonning tiers, I guess. Um, one thing to kind of go through that is it's implied, like, with Jiraiya, that, like, his uh, Sage Mode is, like, once he goes into Sage Mode, he's, like, the you know, like, Toad Sage, like, the Hermit Sage Mount Miyabohu, he's no longer a Sonin, you know what I mean, it's, like, his, like, farther, uh, form that's beyond the Sonin, and Oro's Hydra form is kind of, like, the parallel to that, and Itachi just one-shots it, like, straight up just blitzes through him, one-shots it, um, and Pain should scale relative to this Itachi, um, I think they are very much comparable, if you want, like, um, a straight up statement uh i do have a video on itachi versus pain but pain is uh stated or implied to be the strongest man in the akatsuki so you could use that just to say that he could also um be able to do a similar thing to this oro um which i think isn't too wrong because 
some people like to say the statements in reference to Itachi, but we don't got to get into that here. Um, but yeah, Pain should be able to do the same thing, and he's just narratively far above this Orochimaru, even in his Hydra form. Yeah, um, yeah do you want to go ahead and continue with that? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I 100% agree. Uh, and if, again, if you look at his performance against, like, Sage Mo Jiraiya as well, like, this should be just be an indicator. Uh, because Jiraiya, like, had to flee the battlefield versus, like, three of the lesser pats. Um, I actually do think you can make a case, like, Jiraiya could be, like, Beat the pats one on one, maybe excluding the diva path. I think that's f totally fair. Uh, maybe even like two, but I mean, like the, we're talking about all six. You know what I'm saying? Orochimaru is just gonna get overwhelmed very quickly. Uh, the ch you know the Renegon rods are gonna be pretty disastrous for somebody like him because he's not gonna really be able to do what he does, like you know body replacement, get out of like with a lot of slippery tactics because he's just gonna get nailed and have the Rene uh, Nagato's chakra pouring into him and stuff like that. So and again like this, it, it, his Edo Tensei, which really shouldn't be like that far, like wouldn't really be that much like off from like pain stat wise. Again, they also just get pretty impaired by the Renegon rods and stuff like that. So on top of all the absolute ludicrous stuff Pain has, like the Jutsu he puts on the dog, the replicating dog, the chameleon, like all these things that Richard just wouldn't really have answers for, he's just going to be stacking at all the same time. And we really just don't get to see Pain fight at full power in the series. Like all six paths just aping at the same time, one opponent without any restrictions. Uh, but if it were to happen, yeah, it'd be pretty disastrous for Richard Yeah. I feel like, uh, I'm pretty sure they do that against, like, Utakata in the anime. Yeah, in the anime, yeah. Yeah, that's, like, a like a pure, like, uh, pain, like, moment. But um, one thing you could also say is this is, like, Hydra or it's like we're, we're giving him, like, the, the high form. But one thing that's debatable about this is if it's a form or a jutsu. Um, and the third data book actually calls it a jutsu. So maybe you could say that he could just absorb it. <laughs> yeah yeah i might yeah. lean towards not but yeah, it's kind of crazy it's kind of yeah. crazy you, you brought it up to me um that it could potentially be a summoning because mm -hmm. he comes out of it which i also think is interesting as well yeah. but um regardless like the hydro form like if whatever you want to call it should not really pose that much of a threat to pain like he could just like chibaku ten or not chibaku ten, but like shinra tensei yeah blow it back you know what i'm and saying it really shouldn't be that much yeah and to add to that if you do think it's a summon like how i kind of thought um since Oro kind of works out in conjunction with the Hydra, and it's also like a different like a jutsu rather than like a form, you could say it's a summon. And there is a chapter synopsis statement that says Jiraiya is um, like him with Ma and Paul is like the strongest like summoning team. So you could just say that's directly above like Oro Hydra. Maybe you could say that um, I believe the Oro Hydra fight is like uh, like three nineties, and then the pain parts like. Uh, 380s so you could say it's like a 10 chapter difference so maybe you know the oro hydra stuff wasn't quite in the series yet whatever it's fine i'm sure kishimoto was thinking about it but i can't prove that so it doesn't really matter um but you could say that uh if you want something else for that um just to say that uh pain could have a more concrete way of beating up the hydra because he's able to beat up sage Jiraiya. and the only way sage Jiraiya was ever going to win that was one-on-one -on -one. i mean the synopsis statement says that like he was on the road to victory now that it's one-on-one -on -one, and that's when he like kicks him but yeah I, I, you know like i think past that i don't even think that's doing too much because i think that's also in reference to, like a holding back pain because again as tg just alluded to we never really seen like a like a full power um pain and whatnot so I think Pain versus Oro is an all-out stomp. I think things such as like Almighty uh, Push is just a bad thing for him, um, because you know it's stated in the Ford Data Book that it can like repel all things in creation. So there's nothing Oro has that just will not get repelled back. Um, if you take the games as canon, they do fight, and uh, we saw how that went. So you know. Yeah. Um, do you have anything else to to add to this stomp? No, nah, I mean, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory. Like, Pain just has so yeah. much Jutsu and stuff like that. And, like, even, like, the chakra absorption, like, you know, there, it's kind of difficult to see, like, Orochimaru, like, push Pain to the point, like, is, the Nagato wouldn't be able to just absorb the chakra. He's so many ways to go around it and stuff yeah. like that. And it's, uh, everything Oro summons is not going to really be able to be anything Pain could summon and stuff like that. It's just pretty, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think it's just... Again, we go back to, like, Arsenal advantages, and Orochimaru had a lot of those prior, and then he just doesn't have it here. It's, like, the opposite. Um, I don't even think, like, things such as Chibaku would have to come out. I just don't nah. think that would be plausible. Um, I think, let's say, like, he brought out the, um, the Edo Tensei, and he brought out Manda. He would just have the Animal Pass deal with Manda, and then he would just have, uh, like, maybe the Ashra and, like, the Preda go deal with, um, 
go deal with you know the Edo Tensei and I think they honestly would be able to because listen like the human path arguably the weakest path not looking eyes closed just got kicked in the face in smoke is able to catch a sage mode punch like a beyond sawing level punch so yeah. like one pain like one path the human path could low-key you know beat like um beat like here's an I mean, I hear him, but could beat like Toby Rama or the Hashi Rama Edo Tensei, like one on one at least, and uh, arguably at once. So I just think it's pretty bad stomp. Um, and I think uh, Orochi Maru just stomps. No, I'm kidding. I think Pain wins. That would be yeah, bad. Yeah. Um, next up, we do have Itachi, and I mean, we saw this one. Like, it, there's not much to really talk about. Nah, it's so self-explanatory to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like, listen, we saw what happened. Literally, Itachi just blitzed and one shot that again above Sonin form of Orochimaru or Jutsu of Orochimaru. Do you have anything just to to get on to Itachi and what he might be able to do? No, I mean like you know we we saw a lot of this like he's able to Genjutsu Orochimaru and like force them away from the Akatsuki speed with the Susanos too much. He recognizes the threat that Orochimaru like poses and is very willing to go all out against him. So I just I, I feel like there's not too much discussion that really needs to be happened. Like we saw a lot of this in the series. Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it's pretty bad if I'm being completely honest. I think like even then there's more you can go down the route other than Totska Blade. I think other things such as, you know, Amaterasu and Tsukiyomi all pose a threat. Um, yeah. And if you want something else too, like you go back to like just base on base with the younger Itachi, he was able to put him in Demonic Illusion Shackling Stakes, which is a, you know, it's not even a, um, a Mangekyo Genjutsu. It's actually a three Tomoe Genjutsu, so it's mm -hmm. not even like near full power. So, and he instantly just like beat up that Oro and just kind of put him down. So, you know, I, I think Itachi, you know, wins this pretty, uh, pretty confidently. Um, and yeah, our last one here is Obito, and like, okay, it's it's kind of like he done, but the exact opposite. Like, what is there to say? Yeah. In benefit, you know, like, but here it's like, what is there to say in negation? Like, Obito should just win like bfr done you know yeah. what i mean so um like maybe you could say the orange mask obito is just completely fodder i know some people do believe that and they think that like oh he's so weak miato really hurt him so bad he's like fub and tornay level he's not able to blitz them like how he should be and it's like oh whatever you know it's it's whatever you know i think obito is clearly um if you want something he should be above pain we already talked about how bad pain beats him up he should be above pain in my opinion uh, I think TG subscribed to the same thing as well. Yeah. With, like, Minato just, you know, stating that Obito's clearly the real threat, not Pain. And uh, Minato kind of being confident that he'd be able to beat Pain. Uh, but Obito is, like, was something that kind of worried him a little more. And uh, kind of made him want Naruto to have KCM, like, KCM 2. You know, like, a full mastered uh, half the Ninetales, rather than just Pain, who couldn't get past Sage Naruto's durability. So, um, you know, you can have a precedent there that Obito should just win. And, uh, yeah, that concludes this, uh, this video. Um, let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. Do you think we're, uh, again, just completely off our rockers? Or if you think <laughs> that we were just spot on on absolutely every play and Oro is an absolute goat? Uh, yeah, let me know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Anyway, it is really interesting. And make sure to let me know. Uh, shout out to TG for coming on here and, um, you know, hopping on this video. And, um, yep, yep. Yep, go subscribe to him. And, uh, yeah, love you guys. Bro, oh, my God. Oh, I, I was having a leg cramp, dude, right now. <laughs>